So now let's shift gears and talk about the uh, superorbital eyebrow craniotomy. And this is a, a, a really nice approach for many uh, lesions that are um, in the frontal fossa and the paracellar region, such as meningiomas, some craniofringiomas, which are not retrochiasmal in, in location, which extend laterally or extend anteriorly. And then we also use this approach now for many intraaxial uh, frontal and some medial temporal lobe tumors. Now, this approach has been around for a long time, um, and it's, I think it's used more and more because it really is sort of the sweet spot uh, of the frontotemporal craniotomy, the sweet spot of the terional craniotomy. The entry point is on the floor of the frontal fossa, and it really gives you this wide exposure into the frontal fossa, the paracellar, and the parasylvian regions. And again, uh, it requires very little uh, dissection um, of, the, of the scalp, and in most cases, as I'll show, has an excellent cosmetic result. Dr. Pernetsky and his group and Dr. Rice were really the ones who, the, the champions of this approach, they had this large publication, a large series of over 1,000 patients they published in 2005, showing some of the technical nuances. It's really been around for a long time, and as shown here, there have been numerous other publications over the years, including in, in pediatrics. And I think it's, a, it's really a nice approach, and it's akin to the endonasal endoscopic approach in that it, um, it, uh, it's working through a small corridor. You have to be comfortable working in that small corridor. You need to have the refined instrumentation. Um, and in some ways, very, very similar to the endonasal endoscopic uh, approach. Um, this was a publication by Nicholas, uh, Nikolai Hopp and his group showing its use in removing medial temporal lobe lesions. So you can do a very nice splitting of the sylvian fissure and take out uh, medial temporal lobe uh, lesions quite effectively uh, with this approach. Um, we also had a recent publication using it for intraaxial tumors, mostly metastases and some gliomas. Um, and so I, I think it can be used for a whole variety of things, both intraaxial and extraaxial. So the, the positioning is really um, very similar for arterial craniotomy. The patient's in pins. The head is hung back a little bit rotated about 30 degrees, malar eminence prominent. The skin incision goes um, from just medial to the supraorbital uh, nerve notch, as shown here, extends out in the eyebrow and to the termination of the eyebrow. And in some instances, you can take it a little further in a skin fold. Um, very important to raise a pericranial flap for cosmesis. I'll talk a little bit about where the burr hole goes, how the craniotomy is done, the issue of the frontal sinus, um, and then we'll talk about the closure. So, so this is um, a, a case um, showing the, the exposure here. You can see um, the outline of the craniotomy here. You can see the superorbital nerve uh, here is, is preserved. The burr hole uh, typically goes uh, just below the superior temporal line. And uh, this provides you about one and a half to two centimeters in height and about 25 millimeters in width. Um, very uh, generous space to work once you get used to working in these in these uh, smaller smaller uh, uh, spaces. Very important that the height is enough, and this is why fish hooks are really important to bring the exposure of the superorbital area so that you can um, get a wide enough, a tall enough craniotomy. Otherwise, you can have trouble getting your bipolars open, and that's obviously a big problem. If you can't use your bipolars, um, you shouldn't be using uh, this approach. Um, so once you open the bone, uh, it's very important to drill down um, to bevel the inner table here to give you this really flush approach into the uh, frontal fossa. That is really critical. Um, this is an older case. We don't typically use tack-ups anymore, um, but you can if you like. But this drilling of the inner table is really uh, critical to get as wide of an exposure as, as possible. So here's a nice case, which is uh, appropriate for, in my opinion, for a superorbital approach. It's a, a meningioma um, involving uh, the frontal fossa here. You can see indenting the frontal lobe. Um, you, could, you could certainly do a, a, a bicoronal approach. You could do a terional craniotomy. But you can really uh, get to this through, through an eyebrow approach. And um, so here's just the exposure here, the fish hooks you can see. Um, you can see the exposure of the superior temporal line. These are fish hooks here. These are just sutures. You don't want to pull too hard on the lower aspect of the incision because it will pull the, it'll 